I don't know well enough to answer. And the reason I keep saying his words is, I took it as a direction. Right. I mean, this is the President of the United States with me alone saying, I hope this. I took it as, this is what he wants me to do. Now, I didn't, I didn't obey that, but that's the way I took it. You may have taken it as a direction, but that's not what he said. Correct. I, that's he, why said, I said. he said, I hope. Those are exact words. Okay. Correct. You, you don't know of anyone that's ever been charged for hoping something. Is that a fair statement? I don't as I sit here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Regardless of the outcome of our investigation into the Russia links, Director Comey's firing and his testimony raised separate and troubling questions that we must get to the bottom of. Again, as I said at the outset, I've seen firsthand how seriously every member of this committee is taking his work. I'm proud of the committee's efforts so far. But let me be clear. This is not a witch hunt. This is not fake news. It is an effort to protect our country from a new threat that quite honestly will not go away anytime soon. Well, it, my impression, and again, it's my impression, I could always be wrong, but my common sense told me that what was going on is either he had concluded or someone had told him that you didn't, you've already asked Comey to stay and you didn't get anything for it. And that the dinner was an effort to build a relationship, in fact, he asked specifically, of loyalty in the context of asking me to stay. And as I said, what was odd about that is we'd already talked twice about it by that point. And he'd said, uh, I very much hope you'll stay. I hope you'll stay. In fact, I just remembered sitting here a third one. When you've seen the picture of me walking across the blue room, uh, and uh, what the president whispered in my ear was, I really look forward to working with you. So after those encounters. And that was just a few days before you were Yeah, that was on the 20, the Sunday after the inauguration. The next Friday, I have dinner, and the president begins by wanting to talk about my job. And so I'm sitting there thinking, wait a minute, three times we've already. You've already asked me to stay or talked about me staying. My common sense, again, I could be wrong, but my common sense told me what's going on here is that he's looking to get something in exchange for granting my request to stay in the job. Of things, I think the circumstances, the subject matter, and the person I was interacting with. Circumstances, first, I was alone with the President of the United States, or the President-elect, soon to be President. The subject matter, I was talking about matters that touch on the FBI's core responsibility and that relate to the president, president-elect personally, and then the nature of the person. I was honestly concerned that he might lie about the nature of our meeting, and so I thought it really important to document. That combination of things I'd never experienced before, but it led me to believe I got to write it down, and I got to write it down in a very detailed way. morning. I thought I would just offer some very brief introductory remarks and then I would welcome your questions. When I was appointed FBI director in 2013, I understood that I served at the pleasure of the president. Even though I was appointed to a 10-year term, which Congress created in order to underscore the importance of the FBI being outside of politics and independent, I understood that I could be fired by a president for any reason or for no reason at all. And on May the 9th, when I learned that I had been fired, for that reason, I immediately came home as a private citizen. But then the explanations, the shifting explanations, confused me and increasingly concerned me. They confused me because the president and I had had multiple conversations about my job, both before and after he took office. And he had repeatedly told me I was doing a great job and he hoped I would stay. And I had repeatedly assured him that I did intend to stay and serve out the remaining six years of my term. He told me repeatedly that he had talked to lots of people about me, including our current attorney general, and had learned that I was doing a great job and that I was extremely well liked by the FBI workforce. So it confused me when I saw on television the president saying that he actually fired me because of the Russia investigation and learned again from the media that he was telling private 
immediately other parties that my firing had relieved great pressure on the Russia investigation. I was also confused by the initial explanation that was offered publicly that I was fired because of the decisions I had made during the election year. That didn't make sense to me for a whole bunch of reasons, including the time and all the water that had gone under the bridge since those hard decisions that had to be made. That didn't make any sense to me. And although the law required no reason at all to fire an FBI director, the administration then chose to defame me and more importantly the FBI by saying that the organization was in disarray, that it was poorly led, that the workforce had lost confidence in its leader. Those were lies, plain and simple. And I am so sorry that the FBI workforce had to hear them, and I'm so sorry that the American people were told them. I worked every day at the FBI to help make that great organization better. And I say help because I did nothing alone at the FBI. There are no indispensable people at the FBI. The organization's great strength is that its values and abilities run deep and wide. The FBI will be fine without me. The FBI's mission will be relentlessly pursued by its people, and that mission is to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution of the United States. I will deeply miss being part of that mission, but this organization and its mission will go on long beyond me and long beyond any particular administration. I have a message before I close for the, my former colleagues of the FBI, but at first I want the American people to know this truth. The FBI is honest. The FBI is strong, and the FBI is and always will be independent. And now to my former colleagues, if I may. I am so sorry that I didn't get the chance to say goodbye to you properly. It was the honor of my life to serve beside you, to be part of the FBI family, and I will miss it for the rest of my life. Thank you for standing watch. Thank you for doing so much good for this country do that good as long as ever you can. And senators, I look forward to your questions. And on May the 9th, when I learned that I had been fired, for that reason, I immediately came home as a private citizen. But then the explanations, the shifting explanations, confused me and increasingly concerned me. They confused me because the president and I had had multiple conversations about my job, both before and after he took office. And he had repeatedly told me I was doing a great job and he hoped I would stay. And I had repeatedly assured him that I did intend to stay and serve out the remaining six years of my term. He told me repeatedly that he had talked to lots of people about me, including our current attorney general, and had learned that I was doing a great job and that I was extremely well-liked by the FBI workforce. So it confused me when I saw on television the president saying that he actually fired me because of the Russia investigation. And there wasn't uh, sufficient evidence to bring a suit against her, although it had been very uh, careless in their behavior. But you did reach a conclusion in that case that it was not uh, necessary to further pursue her. Yet at the same time, in the case of Mr. Comey, you said that there was not enough information to make a conclusion. Tell me the difference between your conclusion as far as former Secretary Clinton is concerned and and Mr. Mr. Trump. The Clinton investigation was a completed investigation that uh, the FBI had been deeply involved in, and so I had an opportunity to understand all the facts and apply those facts against the laws I understood them. This investigation was underway still going when I was fired. So it's nowhere near in the same place. At least it wasn't when I was. But it's still ongoing. Correct. As so far as I know, it was when I left. That investigation was going on. This investigation is going on. You reached separate conclusions. No, that one was done. 
I, I only that investigation of any involvement of Secretary Clinton or any of her associates is completed. Yes, as of July the 5th, the FBI completed its investigative work, and that's what I was announcing, what we had done and what we had found. Well, at least in the minds of this member, there's a whole lot of questions remaining about what went on, particularly considering the fact that, as you mentioned, it's a, quote, big deal as to what went on during the campaign. So I'm glad you concluded that part of the investigation, but I, I, I think that the American people have a whole lot of questions out there, particularly since you just emphasized the role that Russia played. And obviously, she was a candidate for president at the time, so she was clearly involved in this whole situation where fake news, uh, as you just described it, big deal, uh, took place. And, uh, you, you're going to have to help me out here. In other words, we're complete the investigation of anything that former Secretary Clinton had to do with the campaign is over and we don't have to worry about it anymore? With respect to Secretary, I'm not, I'm, I'm a little confused, Senator. With respect to Secretary Clinton, yeah. we investigated criminal investigation in connection with her use of a personal email server. I understand. And that's the investigation I announced the inclusion of on July 5th. So, but it, at the same time, you made the announcement there would be no f charges brought against uh, then Secretary Clinton uh, for any activities involved in the Russia involvement in our engagement in our uh, election. I don't, I don't quite understand how you could be done with that, but not complete, done with the whole investigation of their attempt to affect the outcome of our election. No, I'm sorry. We're not, at least when I left, when I was fired on May the 9th, there was still an open, active investigation to understand the Russian efforts and whether any Americans work with them. But you it, reached the conclusion that there was no reason to bring charges against Secretary Clinton. So you reached a conclusion. In the case of Mr. Comey, you, uh, the President uh, Comey, I mean, excuse no, sir. me, in the case of President Trump, you uh, have an ongoing investigation. So you got one candidate who you're done with and another candidate that you have a long way to go. Is that correct? I don't know how far the, the FBI has to go, but yes, that the Clinton email investigation was completed. The investigation of Russia's efforts in connection with the election and whether there was any coordination, and if so, with whom, you between Russia it, and the campaign, you just was ongoing it, when I left. You just made it clear in what you said. This is a, quote, big deal, unquote. Uh, I, I think it's hard to reconcile. In one case, you reach a complete conclusion, and the other side, you have, you have not. And you, uh, in fact, obviously... There's a lot more there, as, as we know, as you called it, a, quote, big deal. She's one of the candidates. But in her case, you say there will be no charges. And in the case of uh, President Trump, the, uh, the investigation continues. What has been brought out in this uh, hearing is, uh, is more and more emphasis on the Russian engagement and involvement in this campaign. How, how serious do you think this was? Very serious, but I, I want to say some. Be clear: it was we have not announced, and there was no predication to announce an investigation of whether the Russians may have coordinated with Secretary Clinton's campaign. Secretary Clinton's campaign. No, but they may not have been involved with their campaign. They were involved with the entire presidential campaign, obviously. Of course, yes, sir. And that that is an investigation that began last summer, and so far as I'm aware, continues. So both. President Trump and former candidate Clinton are both involved in the investigation, yet one of them, you said, there's going to be no charges, and the other one, the, the investigation continues. Well, I, th I think there's a double standard there, to tell you the truth. Uh, then when the president said to you, you talked about the uh, April 11th phone call, and he said, quote, because I've been very loyal to you, very loyal, we had that thing you know. Did that arouse your curiosity as what, quote, that thing was? Yes. Why didn't you ask him? It didn't seem to me to be important for the conversation we were having to understand it. I took it to be some, um, an effort to 
to uh, communicate to me this that there is a relationship between us where I've been good to you, you should be good to me. Yeah, but I, I think it would intensely arouse my curiosity if uh, the President of the United States said, we had that thing, you know. I'd like to know what the hell that thing is, particularly if I'm the director of the FBI. Yeah, I, I get that, Senator. Honestly, I'll tell you what, this is speculation, but what I concluded at the time is in his memory he was searching back to our encounter at the dinner and was preparing himself to say, I offered loyalty to you, you promised loyalty to me, and all of a sudden his memory showed him that did not happen, and I think he pulled up short. That's just a guess, but I, I, I have a lot of conversations with humans over the years. I think I would have had some curiosity if it had been about me, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, so are you aware anything that would believe you to believe that the president or the members of the administration or members of the campaign could potentially be used to coerce or blackmail the administration? That's a subject for investigations, not something I can comment on sitting here. But you reached that conclusion as far as Secretary Clinton was concerned, but you're not reaching a conclusion as far as this administration is concerned. Uh, are you aware of anything that would lead you to believe that information exists that could uh, coerce members of the administration or blackmail the administration? That's not a question I can answer, Senator. <laughs> Senator's time's expired. Do you believe there were any tapes uh, or recordings of your conversations with the president? It never occurred to me till the president's tweet. I'm, I'm not being facetious. I hope there are, and I'll consent to the release of. So both of you, both of you are in the same findings here. You both hope there's tapes and recordings. Well, I'm the. I, all I can do is hope. Uh, the, the president surely knows whether he taped me, and if he did, uh, my feelings aren't hurt. Release the entire. Release all the tapes. I'm gotcha. good with it. Gotcha. Comey, a broad question. Um, was the Russian activity in the 2016 election a one-off proposition, or is this part of a long-term strategy? Will they be back? Oh, it's a long-term practice of theirs. It, it stepped up a notch in a significant way in 16. They'll be back. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important for the American people to understand that this is this is very much a forward-looking investigation in terms of how do we understand what they did and how do we prevent it. Would you agree that that's a big part of our role here? Yes, sir. And it's not a Republican thing or a Democratic thing. It really is an American thing. They're going to come for whatever party uh, they choose to try and uh, work on behalf of. And they're, they're not devoted to either, in my experience. They're just about their own advantage. And they will be back. That's my observation. I don't think Putin is a Republican or a Democrat. He's an opportunist. I think that's a fair statement. Uh, with regard to the... Uh, with regard to the uh, several of these conversations, in his interview with Lester Holt on NBC, the president said, I had dinner with him. He wanted to have dinner because he wanted to stay on. Is this an accurate statement? No, sir. Did you in any way initiate that dinner? No. He called, he called me at my desk at lunchtime and asked me, uh, was I free for dinner that night? And called himself and said, uh, can you come over for dinner tonight? And I said, yes, sir. He said, will six work? I think he said six first. And then he said, I was going to invite your whole family, but we'll do that next time. I wanted you to come over. And is, is that a good time? I said, sir, whatever works for you. And then he said, uh, how about 6.30? And I, I said, whatever works for you, sir. And then I hung up and had to call my wife and break a date with her. I was supposed to take her out to dinner that night. Uh, and That's uh, one of the all-time great excuses for breaking a date. Yeah. <laughs> In retrospect, I would have, I love spending time with my wife. I wish <laughs> I'd been there that night. That's one question I'm not going to follow up, Mr. Cohen. But in that same interview, the president said, in one case I called him and in one case he called me. Is that an accurate statement? No. Did you ever call the president? No. I, I might. The only reason I'm hesitating is I think there was at least one conversation where I was asked to call the White House switchboard to be connected to him. But I, I never initiated a communication with the president. Uh, and it is
you said after you were dismissed, you gave information to a friend mm -hmm. so that friend could get that information into the public media. Correct. What kind of information was that? Was not, what kind of information did you give to a friend? That the, pre the, the, uh, the Flynn conversation, that the president had asked me to let the, the Flynn, I mean, I'm forgetting my exact own words, but the, the conversation in the Oval Office. So you didn't consider your memo or your sense of that conversation to be a government document. You considered it to be somehow your own personal document that you could share with the media as you wanted to? Correct. Through a I, friend? I understood this to be my recollection recorded of my conversation with the president. As a private citizen, I felt free to share that. I thought it very important to get it out. So were all of your memos that you recorded on classified or other documents, uh, memos that might be yours as a private citizen? I'm sorry, I'm not following the question. Well, I think you said you'd use classified, a classified... Uh, oh, yeah, not equipment. the classified documents. Unclassified, I don't have any of them anymore, but I gave them to the special counsel. But, yeah, my view was that the content of those unclassified, the memorialization of those conversations was my recollection recorded. So why didn't you give those to somebody yourself rather than give them through a third party? Because I was worried the media was camping at the end of my driveway at that point, and I was actually going out of town with my wife to hide, and I worried it would be like feeding seagulls at the beach if, if, it, was, if it was I who gave it to the media. So I asked my friend, make sure this gets out. It does seem to me that what you do there is create a source close to the former director of the FBI as opposed to just taking responsibility yourself for saying here are these records um, and uh, like everybody else I have other things I'd like to get into but uh, I'm out of time. Okay. A lot of this comes down to who should we believe. Do you want to say anything as to why we should believe you? Probably, my mother raised me not to say things like this about myself, so I'm not going to. Um, I think people should look at the whole body of my testimony. Mm -hmm. Because as I used to say to juries, and when I talked about a witness, you can't cherry pick it. You can't say, I like these things he said, but on this, he's a, he's a dirty, rotten liar. Right. you got to take it all together. And I've tried to be open and fair and transparent and accurate. A really significant fact to me is, so why did he kick everybody out of the Oval Office? Why would you kick the attorney general, the president, the chief of staff out to talk to me if it was about something else? And so that, that to me, is a, as an investigator, is a very significant fact. And the, there should be no fuzz on this whatsoever. The Russians interfered in our election during the 2016 cycle. They did it with purpose, they did it with sophistication, they did it with overwhelming technical efforts, and it was an active measures campaign driven from the top of that government. There is no fuzz on that. It is a high confidence judgment of the entire intelligence community, and, and the members of this committee have uh, seen the intelligence. It's not a close call. That happened. That's about as unfake as you can possibly get and is very, very serious, which is why it's so refreshing to see a bipartisan focus on that, because this is about America, not about any particular party. So that was a hostile act by the Russian government against this country? Yes, sir. Did the we briefed the congressional leadership about what Americans we had opened counterintelligence investigation cases on, and we specifically said the president is not one of those Americans, but that there was no other investigation of the president that we were not mentioning at that time. What the context was counterintelligence, but I wasn't trying to hide some criminal investigation of the president. And was the president under investigation at the time of your dismissal on May 9th? No. You know, this investigation is full of leaks left and right. I mean, we've learned more from the newspapers sometimes than we do from our open hearings, for sure. Do um, you ever wonder why, of all the things in this investigation, the only thing that's never been leaked is the fact that the president was not personally under investigation, despite the fact that both Democrats and Republicans and the leadership of Congress knew that and have known that for weeks? 
I don't know. I find matters that are brief to the Gang of Eight uh, are pretty tightly held, in my experience. Uh, the meeting in the Oval Office where he made the request about uh, Mike Flynn, was that the only time he asked you to hopefully let it go? Yes. And in that meeting, uh, as you understood it, that was, he was asking not about the general Russia investigation. He was asking very specifically about the jeopardy that Flynn was in himself. That's how I understood it, yes, sir. And as you perceived it, while it was a request that you hoped you did away with it, you perceived it as an order, given his position, the setting, and the like, and the, some of the circumstances. Yes. Uh, at the time, did you say anything to the president about that is not an appropriate request, or did you tell the White House counsel that is not an appropriate request? Someone needs to go tell the president that he can't do these things? I didn't, no. Okay. Why? I don't know. I think, the, as I said earlier, I think the circumstances were such that it was, I was a bit stunned and didn't have the presence of mind. And I don't know, you know, I don't want to uh, uh, make you sound like I'm Captain Courageous. I don't know whether you would have had the presence of mind, I would have said to the president, sir, that's wrong. I don't know whether I would have. Okay. But in the moment, it, it, didn't, it didn't come to my mind. What came to my mind is be careful what you say. And so I said, I agree, Flynn is a good guy. So on the cloud, we keep talking about this cloud, you perceive the cloud to be the Russian investigation in general. Yes, sir. Right? But the specific ask was that you would tell the American people what you had already told him, what you had already told the leaders of Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, that he was not personally under investigation. Yes, sir. That's In fact, how he was I'm... asking you to do what you have done here today. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and again, at that setting, did you say to the president that it would be inappropriate for you to do so and then talk to the White House counsel or anybody so hopefully they would talk to him and tell him that he couldn't do this? First time I said, I'll see what we can do. Second time I explained how it should work that the White House counsel should contact the Deputy Attorney General. You told and him the that. president said, okay, that, I think that's what I'll do. And, and just to be clear, for you to make a public statement that he was not under investigation would not have been illegal, but you felt it made no sense because it could potentially create a duty to correct if circumstances changed. Yes, sir. We wrestled with it before my testimony where I confirmed uh, that there was an investigation. And there were two primary concerns. One was, it creates a duty to correct, which I've lived before, and you want to be very careful about doing that. And second, it's a slippery slope, because if we say the president and the vice president aren't under investigation, what's the principled basis for, for stopping? Okay. And so okay. the leadership at, at Justice, acting Attorney General Bente, said you're not going to do that. Now, on March 30th, during the phone call about uh, General Flynn, you said he abruptly shifted and brought up something that you call, quote unquote, the McCabe thing. Specifically, the McCabe thing, as you understood it, was that McCabe's wife had received campaign money from what I assume means Terry McAuliffe. Yes, sir. That's was what very I close to the Clintons. And, uh, and so why did you, had the president at any point in time expressed to you concern, opposition, potential opposition to McCabe? I don't like this guy because he got money from someone that's close to Clinton. He had asked me during previous conversations about Andy McCabe and said, in essence, how's he going to be with me as president? I was pretty rough on him on the campaign trail. He was and rough on McCabe? He was rough, by his own account, he said he was rough on McCabe and Mrs. McCabe uh, on the campaign trail. How's he going to be? And I assured the president, Andy is a total pro. Um, the, no issue at all. You got to know the people of the FBI. They are not. So, the, uh, so then the president turns to you and says, remember, I never brought up the McCabe thing. Um, because you said he was a good guy. Did you perceive that to be a statement that um, I took care of you, I, I didn't do something because you told me he was a good guy, so now you know, I'm asking you potentially for something in return? Is that how you perceived it? I wasn't sure what to make of it, honestly. That's possible, but it, it, it was so out of context that I didn't have a clear view of what it was. Now, on a number of occasions here, you bring up, let's talk now about the general Russia investigation, okay? In page six of your testimony, you say, um, the first thing you say is, he asked what we could do to quote unquote lift the cloud, the general Russia investigation, and you responded that we were investigating the matter as quickly as we could and that there would be great benefit if we didn't find anything to having done the work well. And he agreed. He re-emphasized the problems it was causing him, but he agreed. So in essence, the president agreed with your statement that it would be great if we could have an investigation, all the facts came out, and we found nothing. So he agreed that that would be ideal, but this cloud is still... <laughs> 
messing up my ability to do the rest of my agenda. Is that an accurate assessment of Yes, sir. He actually went farther than that. He, he said, and if some of my satellites did something wrong, it'd be good to find that out. Well, that's the second part, and that is the satellites. He said, if one of my satellites, I imagine by that he meant some of the other people surrounding his campaign did something wrong, it would be great to know that as well. Yes, sir, that's what he said. So are those the other, are those the on, only two instances in which that sort of back and forth happened where the president was basically saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, it's okay, do the Russia investigation. I hope it all comes out. I have nothing to do with anything Russia. Um, it'd be great if it all came out, if people around me were doing things that were wrong. Yes, as I, I recorded it accurately there, that was the sentiment he was expressing. Yes, sir. So what it bears it comes down to is the president has asked three things of you. He asked for your loyalty, and you said you would be loyally honest. Honestly loyal. Honestly loyal. Um, the, the, he asked you on one occasion to let the Mike Flynn thing go because he was a good guy. By the way, you're aware that he said the exact same thing in the press the next day. He's a good guy. He's been treated unfairly, et cetera, et cetera. So I imagine your FBI agents read that. I'm sure they did. The, your, the president's wishes were known to them, certainly by the next day when he had a press conference with the prime minister. But going back, the three requests were, number one, be loyal. Number two, um, let the Mike Flynn thing go. He's a good guy. He's been treated unfairly. And number three, can you please tell the American people what these leaders in Congress already know, what you already know, what you've told me three times, that I'm not under pers personally under investigation? Those are the three things he asked. Yes, sir. You know, this investigation is full of leaks left and right. I mean, we've learned more from the newspapers sometimes than we do from our open hearings, for sure. Um, you ever wonder why, of all the things in this investigation, the only thing that's never been leaked is the fact that the president was not personally under investigation, despite the fact that both Democrats and Republicans and the leadership of Congress knew that and have known that for weeks? I don't know. I find matters that are briefed to the Gang of Eight uh, are pretty tightly held, in my experience. Let me go back, if I can, very briefly to the decision to publicly go out with your results on the email. Was your decision influenced by the Attorney General's tarmac meeting with the former President Bill Clinton? Yes, in, in a ultimately uh, conclusive way. That was the thing that capped it for me, that I had to do something separately to protect the credibility of the investigation, which meant both the FBI and the Justice Department. Were there other things that contributed to that that you can describe in an open session? There were other things that contributed to that. Uh, one significant item I can't, I know the committee's been briefed on. There's been some public accounts of it which are nonsense, but I understand the committee's been briefed on the classified facts. Probably the only other consideration but I guess I can talk about an open setting is that at one point the Attorney General had directed me not to call it an investigation, but instead to call it a matter, which confused me and concerned me. But that was one of the bricks in the load that led me to conclude I have to step away from the department if we're to close this case credibly. Director, my last question. So, so again, so the American people can understand this, that report by the New York Times was not true. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, in the main, it was not true. We, and again, all of you know this, maybe the American people don't. Uh, the challenge, and I'm not picking on reporters, about writing stories about classified information is the people talking about it often don't really know what's going on. And those of us who actually know what's going on are not talking about it. And we don't call the press to say, hey, you got that thing wrong about this sensitive topic. We just have to leave it there. I mentioned to the chairman the nonsense around what influenced me to make the July 5th statement. Nonsense, but I can't go explaining how it's nonsense. Thank you.